Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, has directed a review of the program aimed at providing assistance to vulnerable households affected by the scrapping of petrol subsidy. It follows criticism and concerns from Nigerians. Experts argue that the former administration implemented a similar policy, but with little to show for it. However, President Tinubu has also authorized the immediate release of fertilizers and grains to about 50 million farmers across the country. He reassured Nigerians that the approved 500 billion naira for cushioning the effects of subsidy removal will be spent judiciously. Joining us now is Adewole Adebayo, former SDP presidential candidate in the 2023 election in Nigeria. Good morning and welcome to The Morning Show. Good to be here. Well, thank you very much for joining us. When uh, President Chinumbu removed the first subsidy, you accused labor unions of being hypocritical. And now we have seen the effect of that removal of uh, first subsidy. The hardship, the pain that Nigerians are experiencing. President Chinumbu himself says it's like childbirth pain. World Bank says about 7.1 million people will join the poverty uh, trap. Now it looks like it's not just 7.1 that will join. I mean, all of us are already there. Do you still hold on to your position that those who criticize the manner in which the Chinubu administration removed the first subsidy, removing the subsidy before thinking of palliatives, not even thinking through the palliatives properly, and making Nigerians lose almost three months in returns, suffering. Do you still think that people who criticize the policy are hypocrites? There are two types of people who criticize the policy. Some of them are hypocrites, some of them are consistent. Those who are opposed to subsidy removal, like me and other people, they have grounds to criticize the program. But those who supported anyone any party, any platform that said they will remove subsidy on day one, they are hypocritical. Once you agree to throw a five-year-old child from 10th floor of a building, you cannot say, I'm surprised that the child broke the limbs. So that is the point that I'm making. There is no way that you implement the policy that they are implementing now that you are not going to have the same consequences. Economics does not admit of cheating. You can cheat in politics. You can inflate your numbers in, in politics. But when it comes to economics, you can't. You have to take the right policy. If you don't take the right policies, the consequences of the wrong policies will follow. You remember that when we are talking about hypocrites, the hypocrites did not start with the labor union. The hypocrites started with President Inubo himself, who opposed President Jonathan when he had a smaller amount of subsidy uh, adjustment. And all of them went on the street and said, you cannot do this, the, the whole country will collapse. And then when they came to power, they went in the opposite direction and finished everything, once and for all. So it is not only one person or the other, it's not a political statement. When you say that people are hypocritical, just look at the position they took before and look at the position they are taking now. If there is inconsistency in it, there's no logic in the change of opinion you can say they are hypocritical. So I'm not uh, of the view that we should have taken the subsidy off. I, we could predict it. We were discussing it. So nobody can pretend that they are not aware that it will affect factor cost. And if it affects factor cost, it will affect cost of living. If it affects cost of living, more people will go into poverty. So there's no, no, nothing new there. That's what is natural consequence. And that was why during the presidential debate, we were pushing alternative view that we should not do it. But you have done it now. Nothing has surprised me at all. In fact, it appears this might just be the beginning, except that drastic steps are taken to go off uh, that, that line. All right, let, let's um, delve into that, those drastic steps you mentioned. What, what, what looks like drastic steps to be taken by this administration, particularly the president? He has announced that he'll be reviewing the 8,000 Naira earlier promised as a way of palliatives to 12 million households in Nigeria, saying that following feedback, it, it's clearly not going to be sufficient. 
as a way of recommendation, what are these drastic steps? What should palliative look like for the Nigerian people? First, we should stop misusing the word palliative. With this 8,000 Naira, which is a carryover from uh, the existing budget, 2023 budget, because the carryover is a byproduct of the plan that the administration left behind as to how they will manage. Even this 800 million uh, from the World Bank was negotiated by the past government. So policy watchers should not be able to see they didn't know that it was in the offing. It is, um, let me use a very polite language, it is a band aid for a decapitated person. So it doesn't make any sense at all. And they are the, it appears as if the government is not aware of what we call monetary neutrality. When you have no food, when you have no means of transportation, when you have no medical care, throwing money at you is not going to increase the number of service providers. It's not going to increase the value of real goods in the market. What it's going to do is that one, there'll be wastage, that money will not be well used. Secondly, when the money gets to the end user, it is useless to them in the real terms because they don't have the goods to chase with the money. And in the end, it may cause a little bit of inflation. That's all it can do. So the way to go about it now is that if the consensus as it appears, that it appears that Nigerian elites have appeared, they are behaving as if there's no alternative to subsidy removal. So the subsidy has gone. I don't agree with it, but it's the policy of the government. And it appears as if almost every mainstream political party analyst agrees with that bad policy. So if you've taken that bad policy and you want to continue along that line, what you do is to delink the people from the value chain of petrol. And the way to do that is, for example, from the transportation and logistic point of view, you make sure that the price of petrol does not impact on ability of people to commute. That's why you see many cities, whether it's London, Singapore, you can choose any city of your dream. What you will find out is that the common people on the street don't feel the effect when the price of petrol goes up or down. That's why nobody on BBC or CNN will be interviewing petroleum marketer over the economics of his private farms. It's not relevant to you because the government has provided public transportation that has been delinked from that. So if you measure the reaction of people to these things, the, measure, the reactions come in three ways. One, private motorists who have to who have dislocation in their in their planning. You you bought fuel uh, at 400 naira last week. Now it is 600 naira. Now it's a major dislocation. Nobody has that kind of dislocation in a properly run economy. Second, those who de depend on food supplies or other services that require petrol to, to motorize the logistics. Those people get affected. Uh, thirdly, those who are in the market, the petroleum market, who are who make a lot of money or less money, depending on how government policy goes on the matter. Those are the people who worry about it, apart from people in government who worry about the, the fiscal finance of the of the any subsidy that may be there. So I think that the common people are the easiest that we can take off that line. Don't try to throw money at them. Don't try to uh, uh, excuse the dislocation by other government programs that you are doing anyway. You are sending 50,000, uh, well, you are sending grains to farmers. Normally, you must run agriculture, you must send grains to farmers. The issue of what you need to deal with is that you must ensure that people in the public, majority of Nigerians, won't have any price reflection in their transportation. And you can do that easily by making sure you provide public transportation. That's what you can do. Uh, you will see the video there. It's, an, it's a demonstration that it can be done. We pro, uh, as a private charity, we provided vehicles to, to schools all, all over the, the target community that we are using. So those children, they won't care about the price of petrol now. They won't care about it because they are getting transportation to go to work. So imagine the government did it for workers, did it for elderly people, did it for students. Majority of people will not bother about that. You do that intra-city and you do that inter-city. Then you plan over time to ensure that across the country, the, the numbers can be worked 
if the government is running the economy, then what I see that the government is doing now, the government is running the petroleum market, facilitating for their friends who are the importers. What you should do is run the economy. Have certain metric and say, no Nigerian should spend more than 3% of their salary on transportation. Benchmark that. You work towards that. No Nigerian should spend from one end of the country to the other, maximum 12 hours more than 12 hours to travel from Meduguri to Calabar or from uh, Shokoto to Potakot. It shouldn't cost you, it shouldn't take more than two, uh, 12 hours maximum. No person who's a producer should spend more than 5% on logistics wow. when it comes to made of good. You can have those benchmarks, you work towards them, and the economy will be free from getting to know how much somebody imports its product or not. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Adewale Adebayo, for joining us. I see you are in Washington, D.C. Uh, well, this is like saying, I hope it's not that you have jackpot, jadano. Uh, after all, you've been quoted as saying, you people voted for, the, uh, for Tinubu, you might as well live with your choice. This is the consequence of the vote you voted. And it's too early to cry now because actually the real problem hasn't come. But when these problems come, we should solve them as a country. We should not see as a potential of politics. President Tinubu is taking certain measures, which are legacy measures of what he met on the ground. His own policies have not come out. When they come out, you will see that there are complications there because you have to run an economy. It is one thing to win. You can be an expert in winning election, but you have to be an expert in running a, gov a government. And I haven't seen that expertise yet. Uh, maybe when their cabinet comes out and they start to think. I haven't seen the sign of a thinking government yet which is trying to manage the economy. If you see the contradiction in what they are doing, for example, well, look at the Central Bank. On, on that note, on that yeah. note Mr. Adewale Adebayo, presidential candidate of the SDP in the 2023 general election, would like to thank you very much for joining us.